Can you believe that Jeff Wilson traded a Michael Jordan autograph for a LeBron James autograph card? You take the card and put it in the sleeve. Today's video is going to be a fun exercise. When we were kids, of course, we would trade cards with our buddies. Here's the deal. Okay. I'll give you my Meryl show and the Tiant for your McCovey and... No, no, no. McCovey's off the table. Oh, come on, Paul, be reasonable. But nowadays on social media, it's all out there in the open for everybody to analyze and comment on and here to make videos on. And when there's big trades like this involving big dollars, I think it's fun to just kind of take a look at this thing. We're going to look at different angles of this trade. Was it a good one? Was it not a good one? Stick around. What's going on sports card hobby family? Another day. You know what that means. It's another sports card video. Hope you guys had an amazing weekend. Who is ready for the fall season? I'm ready for Halloween. I'm ready for the holidays. It's time to get to some cooler weather. Huge thanks to today's video sponsor, ComC.com. 35 plus million cards in the database. They've got football specials going on for submission, so make sure to take advantage. I've got links down below to start your ComC journey today. Also, you've got nice cards you're worried about the surface, you're worried about the autos fading, don't worry about it, friends. Get a color match slab mag, and don't forget to use Sports Card Dad code for 10% off your order. You deserve 10% off. Sports Card Dad promo code will take you there. All right, Jeff Wilson, the Sports Card Investor folks, were over at Fanatics, Fanatics? Fanatics Fest this past weekend, and Jeff likes to do these types of videos where there's huge buys, sells, huge trades, and then shares kind of the details of the trade in the video, which I think it's enjoyable. I like these types of videos because it does see the thought process behind the buy, the sell, or the trade. And I think card strategy is really underrated content. So I really enjoy hearing the why. Why are you buying a $10,000 card or why are you buying a $100 card? It's all fun. So this is how this thing went down. He's working with another guy, another collector slash dealer there. 2003 SP Authentic LeBron James Rookie Autograph Card. It's number 2500. This guy wanted to trade that to Jeff Wilson for an 86 Fleer Jordan card. Fantastic card. I love this. The sticker. And I remember this card when I was a kid in card shops. This was an expensive card going back to 1989, 1990. And it was just a really cool card. A lot of these 80s cards, I've talked about it. I just think they're really underrated, those early Jordan cards. And this one is signed by Michael Jordan. It's a BGS 9, and it is an auto 9 grade for, for the auto. And frankly, I thought the auto looked really good. Maybe slight streak in there. It is an in-person auto, of course, because Michael Jordan, unlike LeBron James, did not have RPAs, did not have rookie autograph cards. And so... Let's look at this from a few different angles. These guys had these cards almost kind of equal in value in like the $35,000 to $40,000 range based on recent comps, looking at kind of other comps and trying to make an assessment there. I am not a fan of trading Michael Jordan for LeBron James. And I know like, wow, that's a pretty broad statement because it really depends on the card, depends situationally what we're talking about. And I know that Jeff is really buying LeBron to hold for the long run. And, you know, many people would just say, hey, look, if you're buying Jordan or LeBron or some of these greats, you can't go wrong. Well, I sort of agree. And I know that LeBron James is highly accomplished. I know that a lot of people think that LeBron is kind of today's goat for these generations that are here in the younger generations because many of them didn't see Michael Jordan play. For me, I remember LeBron James coming out and I remember him with the Cavs, the lowly Cavs, and him being kind of the, the savior in Cleveland. And I love the story. He's from Akron, Ohio. So he's local there. He's saving his city. You can't come up with a cooler story than this, really. And by all accounts, he had all the hype behind him and he made it happen. He delivered on the hype, which we know, my God, when you watch sports, that's incredibly difficult to do. LeBron James delivered on the hype. The big separation that I've got between Jordan, LeBron, and forget about the politics stuff. People get worked up about the politics. Yeah, I, I get it. Uh, I think that off the court, he, maybe LeBron is not as popular as Jordan was going back in time. However, 
The big thing that I think sticks out with LeBron is he moved around to win his titles. He just bounced around from one super team to the next, whereas Jordan won his six titles with the Bulls. And I know that that is something like many people might not care about that at all because it's just so common nowadays to form the super team. And it's like everyone's got a super team. You know, you look at every team now and it's like they've got two or three great players. They've got two or three all-stars on the team. And those are kind of the top eight to 10 teams in the NBA. But NBA was just different back then. It would have been weird if you had asked Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Jordan, hey, would you play together? Would you team up? I don't think any three of those guys would agree to do that. You know, and it was kind of cool how they really represented and owned their team. Magic Johnson owned the Lakers, Bird, of course, for the Celtics, and Jordan for the Bulls. And you could just kind of distinguish those teams based on their superstar players. And now it's just different. You know, it's a totally different league. It's not better or worse. But, it, you know, this is something where, you know, LeBron had to leave. He had to go to Miami, you know, to go win titles. He did come back, which was cool, and did win with Cleveland. And that really, to me, especially when they beat the Warriors, to me, that was kind of the, the, the highlight of LeBron's career. That's where he really hangs his hat, beating a really dominant Warriors team. But again, you know, if he had stayed in Cleveland and won his four titles and he was the all-time leading scorer and, you, you know, you add up the accolades, to me, it would mean a lot more than how he did it. It's kind of the same problem that Kevin Durant has. One of the all-time great shooters. You know, Kevin Durant's going to go down as an all-time great when it's all said and done. But he was in OKC. They had a great team. They fell to the Warriors. They were so close to beating the Warriors. And then he joined the Warriors. It's kind of like Hulk Hogan, like joining the NWO or something. You know, and then he won with the Warriors that already had prime Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. It was kind of like, you guys are pretty bad if you don't win with, with all you got. You know, it's kind of like an expected thing. I, I don't know. It, it just doesn't hit the same way. And the reason why I bring all this up is because we're looking at long-term trajectory on cards. And of course, which card are we talking about? Price points. Where, where are the price points? For this one, we're looking at it because this is considered kind of apples to apples equal trade. Now, the LeBron card was a 2003 SP Authentic Auto numbered to 500. PSA 10, Auto 10. Let me also say first, I don't want to sit here and pretend like I am a LeBron card expert because I'm absolutely not. So I'm sure a lot of the LeBron card collectors, they might say in the comments, hey, look, this is an important LeBron card. I thought this was a good trade, you know, based on which card it was. I am not a LeBron rookie card expert. And so for me, this just looks like another numbered card. I understand it's SP Authentic, which is a great brand. Upper Deck, fantastic. It is signed. It's a nice signature. It does. It's, it's a 10-10. So I get it. LeBron kind of has the same problem that Tom Brady has a little bit, where Tom Brady's just got a lot of rookie cards, got a lot of autograph cards mixed in, whereas Michael Jordan in the 80s didn't have any rookie autos. So you've got that, that iconic sticker card for Jordan, that 86 Fleer sticker, just an amazing card. It's got a really nice autograph on it. The card is in great condition as well. And I think that maybe Jeff's thought was, is that, hey, look, Michael Jordan stuff is really hot right now. Maybe I should sell off. And, and he did say here to add some context, he did buy the 86 Fleer sticker signed Jordan about two years ago in 2022 for $22,000. So if he's selling slash trading in the, in the range of thirty-five dollars to $40,000, he's doing really well in the card. And so I assume the thinking here is, you know, LeBron stuff has really kind of sagged a little bit, whereas Jordan stuff is pretty hot. So I can take advantage, take some money off the table and get into this LeBron auto, which is a great card. And I agree, it's it's a great card for, for LeBron. I guess my thing is I would just really struggle. Jordan, to me, is the undisputed GOAT. Maybe some people will think that the next gen is going to call LeBron the GOAT or think that Jordan is secondary to LeBron. I don't really know. Or maybe it's just simply, hey, look, you know, Jeff's got a lot of Jordan stuff. Maybe he's like, you know what? I'm taking some money off the table and beefing up my LeBron collection that, that he's got as well. I just don't know if LeBron holds up the same way Jordan does in the long term. But then also I think about LeBron still playing. So, you know, he's still got really, to me, another two years in the league of probably more or less a downward spiral. I know it sounds bad, but as guys get to the end of their career, maybe he does have a super team around him, wins another title, who knows, and kind of you know boost prices. I have no idea. 
But what usually happens is guys kind of fade down the stretch. You know, you start to see a lapse in the skill set and that sort of thing. And to me, kind of that twilight, the last, the next two or three years, my assumption here is LeBron stuff continues to kind of tread water, maybe even dip. I'm guessing I'm speculating just because you got the next crop of guys coming in. People kind of, you know, they forget about greatness. They move on to Ant-Man and Giannis or whoever, Luca, whoever's coming up, right? Whoever the next guys are. And the Stephs and the LeBrons, they start to fade down the stretch a little bit as their skills start to deteriorate as they age naturally. Father time's always batting a thousand. We know that. And so to me on that LeBron card, it's kind of like, well, what's the rush? Like, is that going to get a big boost over the next two or three years? I don't know. I just don't see it. I think LeBron probably gets more of a boost as people start to appreciate him down the road. You know, he gets out of the league, he's retiring, he becomes a Hall of Famer, and then people start to have kind of nostalgic feelings about LeBron. We're kind of on the tail end, the twilight of his career, and I just feel like what's going to really boost his prices over the next two or three years? Maybe he wins another title? I have no idea. Maybe something does. Who knows? Nobody knows what's going to happen in the card market. It is the most finicky market when it comes to collectibles, it feels like. Whereas I think the Jordan card is just more of a solid long-term play. But you know, the other thing is some people don't have the same sort of comfort level with in-person autographs. You know, it is a, you know, a PSA, DNA, it's, it's been sent off to them and you kind of hope that that is an actual Michael Jordan autograph. PSA has authenticated it and graded it, you know, but still it's an in-person autograph. Stranger things have happened, so maybe there's less of a comfort level for some people. They'd rather have that pack pulled LeBron numbered card. You know, the, the Jordan card, of course, not numbered. What happens if Michael Jordan comes out, you know, and starts just signing? You know, Michael Rubin's like, hey, can you come out? We'll pay you a zillion dollars. Can you start signing a bunch of autographs? That's actually what just happened with LeBron James. LeBron James is now signing for Fanatics. He's now signing for Tops, which is interesting. You know, and so that, that's another big question mark here is, yes, this is a rookie auto, but, you know, is LeBron going to go on a signing tear, you know, over the next 5, 10, 20 years? Maybe Jordan does too, but which one is it more likely to happen? To me, it's LeBron because he's already doing it. He's already like just posted up that, that Olympic card with Steph Durant and LeBron on it. Very cool card. And maybe maybe LeBron only does those things in very limited numbers, which I think would be the smart way to do it. But you just never know. He certainly doesn't need the money. So he's not going to be Pete Rose that's at every single card show signing. That's not going to be LeBron James. It's not going to be Tom Brady. It's not going to be Michael Jordan. They're they're loaded. You know, they got hundreds of millions of dollars in Jordan's case. He's got a billion. LeBron will be a billionaire too at some point. So this is very interesting stuff. I would not have made this trade, even though I understand Jeff's up way on the Jordan card. I just love that card as a long-term hold. But I'm also just more biased towards Jordan as a whole, as I explained earlier in the video. But what would you do? Did you feel like this was a good trade? Did you feel like it was a fair trade? Like, did both sides win? Because it felt like the two guys talking felt like both sides are winning. And maybe that is the takeaway. Maybe this is a draw. Both sides win. But let me know your thoughts in the comments, my friends. Stay healthy. Stay awesome. And I will talk to you again later.